streets Corpses near the buildings All this light and heat Time to take a stand, boys Time to make a choice Time to find our courage Time to be deployed Make our only stand here Make our roads complete All we waited for now Past the future meet Get your weapons ready Kiss the ones goodbye Now our time is coming And it is not the time to cry Mariachi band in the background of this music. I don't know, gentlemen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. What is up, Arvanauts? How is everyone doing out there? Welcome to, uh, it's about 35 degrees here in the big city in New York. And welcome to the show. A really cool special show tonight. Um, but uh, just before I introduce our guests and start talking about that, let me say hi to everybody and um, hope that everyone is doing well. Hi to Zavia, TTM. Uh, hi to Tom, who I'm going to talk more about in just a minute. Um, hi to uh, TNS. Hi to Royks. Hello to Poke Dude. Hello to uh, Abma, what's up, Messiah? Hello, Maine. Hello to Jonas, another person I'll be talking more about in just a minute. Hello to Gentleman. Hello to Fisk. What's up, Dragon Spear? What's going on, Don? Hello, Build. What is up, BT Dave? Hello, Adam. What is up, Shadow Mage? Hello, Apples. Hello to everyone. Um, and Night Jim, too, who I see just snuck in. What's going on, everybody? Pleasure to see everyone today. Um, and uh, we are going to continue to get more people in here as well uh, as time goes on. Um, so, a couple of reminders. First of all, to support the stream, uh, you guys know the way to do it. First of all, all is exclamation point ctt you can either click the link or you can click share at the bottom of the video player on your window and that will get you out to twitter to facebook and to all those cool places so please make sure to do that i want to thank people who commented on the steam post and on the seriously uh post message boards about um, this upcoming interview thank you so much and uh you guys are the best of course uh secondly um if you want to know about past broadcasts including of this game and others you can check it out at exclamation point arv2 
YouTube. Uh, and that will get you over to my YouTube where you have, as you know, all my past broadcasts and things like that. And then last but certainly not least, of course, you can always check um, the Steam group, exclamation point Steam group, which will get you over to our uh, group where we uh, chat about things about the stream in between shows and things like that. Um, and that's the deal with that. Only announcement that I want to make besides the fact that we're focusing on Talos Principle tonight is that I have just confirmed that I will be having the harebrained schemes folks uh, on my stream again next week on Thursday to talk about, so one week from today, to talk about the Hong Kong, Shadowrun Hong Kong Kickstarter and talk a little bit about their plans for that game. So the Shadowrun fans out in the audience, make sure to come back with questions for that one as well. That is going to be happening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next week. So I'm looking forward to that. That should be a fun time. So definitely check that out um, one week from today, Thursday at 8 p.m. Standard Time. But tonight we are focusing on the Talos Principle. And so let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this and let me turn on this. Hello, wonderful people of the internet. Good to see everybody. And uh, I hope everyone is doing well out there. So uh, I'm going to uh, bring on now the people into the stream um, that you guys have known for a while that I've been talking about. And I'm really excited about this because um, this is something I've had the opportunity to um, chat uh, I was looking forward. When I saw that this game was coming out, I really wanted to reach out to these guys um, because I knew that this was the kind of game that was not only going to be up my alley, as you guys know, as a story and narrative focused guy and a story and narrative focused channel, but it was um, the kind of game that I thought there, there was a lot of meat in the writing itself and the philosophy. And of course, that has turned out to be the case if you guys have been watching over the last few days as I've played this. And so I am extremely happy and pleased um, to be able to have two um, people on here uh, that I I'm, uh, I reached out to the writers and they got right back to me, which I am very appreciative of. And so I am happy to welcome uh, to the stream uh, Tom Joubert and Jonas Kiratiz, which I hope I got vaguely right. Um, gentlemen, thank you guys so much for being on the stream with me. Uh, yes, grunting noises. Agreement. <laughs> Yes, grunting dozens of agreement. Um, thank you guys so much for being on the stream chat. If you guys want to say hi to Tom and Jonas too, that would be lovely. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks a lot again, guys, for doing this. I know it's very late, as I've told everyone. Um, Tom is in the UK, and Jonas, you're in Germany, right, I believe? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So you are, you see, you're way ahead of us. Um, so thank you for staying up with us, because we, we really do appreciate it. Um, all right, well, let me start with a simple one. And as I say, I know you've heard this probably a million times before, but um, I want to ask a little bit about how you got to the point of, one, writing for games in general, and then, two, how both of you got attached to this project. Because one of the things that's been said is that, um, you know, the same studio that put together um, Serious Serious Sam would not be the first studio you would think of as a place that would do something like the Talos Principle. Um, and so you guys were, I don't know if you guys were brought in to lend them the appropriate amount of gravitas or what it was, but um, but I was hoping you could talk to us just a little bit about how each of you came around to writing for games in general and then this game specifically. And I guess we can start with Tom first and then go over to Jonas. Uh, well, so I, I started out by... Um... <laughs> I always wanted to make games and I always wanted to write and, and it kind of didn't occur to me for a long time when I was young that I could do that as a career. So I was aiming for sort of game design or level design mm -hmm. or something like that. And I was looking for uh, chances to go and do work experience, things like that. And then and then I kind of switched and I started uh, pestering people to write their games and eventually I emailed the Frictional Games guys and they were working on uh, the commercial version of Penumbra and um, I think I, I rewrote their intro script for them mm -hmm. and they got back to me and said look we're, we're making this commercial project do you want to work on it for free and we might pay you at the end um, so that was how I got started and then uh, fast forward what seven eight years um, Crow Team got in touch they'd uh, just played the swapper and really enjoyed that mm -hmm. and they wanted to do something completely different serious sam they wanted to do something philosophical and science fictiony um and and they they gave me a shout and uh i took one look at, at roughly what they wanted to do and said that sounds like something that jonas would nail <laughs> well i am going to ask a little bit about how you guys work together on this uh jonas what about you how'd you get started and how'd you get associated with this project um, I started when I was 16 or so, about 14 years ago, that is. Um, and I was living in Greece. I just thought, hey, making games sounds like fun. You could upload them to the internet with a, you know, 56K modem. Um, 
and I got a copy of Visual Basic from somewhere and just started from from a friend or from a friend's father, I think, and I started just making games, uh, freeware games, um, before there was an indie scene. Um, and I just sort of kept on doing that. And in fact, the second game that I ever made was called The Infinite Ocean, mm -hmm. which was a philosophical game about artificial intelligence, which for some reason people really liked and kept writing to me about for years and years. And then in 2010, many, many years later, I remade it as a Flash game, which people also liked. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Tom played it, and he liked it. And then we sort of got talking a bit, and um, uh, he showed that to Crow Team, and then they liked it, and they said, "Yeah, you can come on and write uh, Thomas Principle." Uh, meanwhile, I've been, you know, I've, I've been writing and de um, designing games and developing them uh, with my wife for quite a long time now. Um, yeah, but but suddenly, out of the blue, I just got this email saying, "Hey, do you want to do a big game with Crow Team?" And I thought, "Of course I do. I'm not mad." <laughs> well, um, and I do want to ask about that too. Um, before I ask about your guys' collaborative process, um, what did I mean? Did the whole? I mean, as as you said, Tom, they they clearly Crow Team wanted to do something very different, but it is very different. I mean, it's it's one thing if you get you know if you get a heads up from uh, Bioware, you know, or or someone that's got uh, a rep for putting together either role playing games or or you know puzzle oriented games. You know, if the guys from Portal stop by, you know, or or something like that. But this is such a departure that were you curious about? I mean, I, I guess I'm wondering they pitched you and said you'll have free reign to more or less do what you like. I'm wondering if they placed restrictions on you or what sort of made you think, you know what? Yeah, I can, I can go with these guys um, for something which seemed like a very big departure for them. Well, you know, you know, it was, um, they, uh, they, 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 no one ever says you have free reign, right? That's <laughs> like, it hasn't happened to me yet. Maybe, okay. maybe one day. Um, but they, they certainly, within certain parameters, for instance, take the, the terminals in the game where you have the, yep. uh, the interactive dialogues with, uh, with the other character. Um, for those, their brief was basically like, Tom, we've got this, we've got this thing. We have these computer terminals. We don't know why they're there or what they do, but we feel like it's a great opportunity to do something interactive with the story and to, I don't know go and do something and we kind of went through a few different versions and iterations on it and, and we ended up with with what made the final game so there was a lot of freedom in the process certainly so that was appealing um and the fact that they they played my previous game enjoyed it right. and wanted to do something that used my particular skills was particularly appealing because you don't have to do so much work with the developer to get them to see your point of view right. because they're kind of already on your side um and then finally the, the the opportunity to work with jonas kind of sealed the deal for me because i didn't want to you know devote all of my time to to one thing i kind of like to have a few things on the go so that i'm splitting my chances a little bit um and and also the chance to i never kind of partnered up with a writer quite um quite like this before so all of those things kind of turned it into a project that was of interest. Yeah, interesting. Um, Jonas, what about you? Uh, were there concerns on your part about hearing from a team that, that was, you know, not sort of in that direction initially, or were you sort of drawn to the same things Tom was? No, I had pretty much the same reaction. I liked Crow Team, I liked Serious Sam to begin with, and it seemed it seemed like we we would have more freedom, actually, than with a team that already was known for doing that sort of thing, and, and really sort of had a pattern of doing things. Um, yeah, that's true. You know, if we were doing, I don't know, Bioshock 4, I mean, obviously we'd say yes to Bioshock 4, right. but, but still, if there's such a clear pattern of storytelling of certain ideas, it might have been a lot less appealing in a way. And, mm -hmm. and here, it was like they had certain themes they wanted to uh, explore, certain ideas, but there was a lot of flexibility, there was a lot of openness on their side, and, um, and that made it extremely appealing and also fun. And for the most part, your sense was, uh, you're right, that no writers don't get any, <laughs> I know this as a writer myself, not of games, but of novels, you, you very seldom get complete free reign in anything, even, even in a novel. Um, but uh, did you, more or less, once they, they gave you the overall parameters, they let you guys go to a degree? I mean, you, you, there were not, that, it doesn't seem like, but you can tell me if I'm wrong, there were a lot of cases where they sort of 
you know, kind of, I don't know, shoehorned you back into a path. I mean, it did seem like you were free to wander about a bit with the exploration. Is that fair to say or, or not? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I uh, don't know how Tom feels, but I think we, we were pretty free to do some crazy things. And there were very minor restrictions like, well, you can't have all these porn titles here. Maybe, you know, change them a little but <laughs> You know, mostly publishing stuff to do with, um, not to do with Crow Team itself, but, you know, with the silliness of the modern world. Mm -hmm. You felt the same, Tom? Yeah, I, I would say that, um, yeah, they certainly encouraged us to mess around with things. That's not to say that they were hands off. They were, they were fairly hands on. They never directly managed us in any way. They, they left us free to set our own targets and and sort of sub deadlines and uh decide where the time needed to go so that was um you know that's always a good way to do it i think it's the only way to do it really um and beyond that yeah it was there were kind of there there wasn't a lot of reining back you know there was there was some practical stuff as there is on on anything but they they were always pretty open to a reasoned discussion on things like that. Very cool. Um, well, before I actually start getting through and doing a little bit of a playthrough as a, as a chat with you guys about some of the specifics, talk to me a little bit about, and by the way, chat, um, welcome for those of you who have come in. We'll get a lot more as time goes on. Um, I am speaking to Tom Joubert and Jonas Karatis about... Um, oh, there's a Z in there, Karatis. Karatis. Uh, yes. Karatis. I, I, like I told him... Gets I, it wrong. Yeah, I know. I told him I was going to make every effort, but Karatis, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Greek to, people get it wrong, too. So. <laughs> uh, I am uh, talking to uh, the two writers of uh, the Talos Principle, which I've been playing for the last couple of days. And if you guys have questions, um, please uh, hold on to them. I will give you ch a chance to ask questions, I promise, um, after uh, I ask a few more of my own, and I'll tell you guys how that's going to be arranged in a bit. Um, but uh, for Tom and Jonas, I want to ask about how the collaborative process worked, because, Tom, as you said, you'd never been paired up with a writer before. Jonas, had you, had you done collaboration with writers before or not? Not on a game, uh, on plays, but uh, stuff like that mostly with my wife, couple, once or twice other people, but never on a game. Okay. So so then I guess my question is, what was it like doing that and how did it work? Um, you know, was there one point where you said, no, I will absolutely, I am the existential guy. How dare you bring in your, no, I'm just kidding. But but how did the, uh, how did the collaborative process work um, for writing? Did you split up the game sort of areas or, or how did you guys do it? Go on, Jonas. You do this one. Um, well, we split up the game just into... Well, we had a lot of conversations and we did a lot of, um, you know, coming up with ideas first and pitches and all that. And uh, then we split up the game into various areas that each of us was going to mainly write. But we shared all the documents of what we wrote and discussed it. Um, so it's not like, you know... If you look at the credits, it says uh, I wrote the the found text that you find on the terminals. Mm -hmm. Tom wrote all the interactive stuff and the QRs. I wrote Elohim and Alexandra. Uh, but at the same time, there's input from both of us on all of it in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So it's not that pure. Is uh, is that? Would you say that's a reasonable, <laughs> a reasonable interpretation, Tom, from your end also? Um, no, he's lying. I did all of it. God damn. <laughs> that's, that's pretty accurate. So, uh, and I'm curious then too, because you guys uh, presumably wanted to create a kind of coherency of voice. Because quite honestly, I mean, obviously there are there are very clearly different voices in the game. But there's not, a, to me anyway, a very obviously noticeable distinction in writing styles. And I've seen, you know, I have uh, friends who've done collaborative work before um, and have done it in a sort of more literary realm as opposed to a game realm. But um, d were there sort of adjustments that had to be made in terms of tone or style um, that you guys sort of adjusted to each other in that? Or, or did you find that you were sort of riffing off each other nicely and didn't have to sort of concentrate on that to a degree? And Wait, that's for either one of you. Is this is this a compliment or a criticism? Are you saying that all of the characters sound alike? No, 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 no. It's that the style and they are all written with uh, equal believability and <laughs> and uh, execution and skill. <laughs> um, I, I I would say on this that we actually cheated by basically writing separate characters. Okay. So that generally, there wasn't a problem of 
us trying to adopt the voice that the other had set. Okay. Um, but uh, maybe we'll try something different next time. Well, there was a bit of it with with some things here and there, but in general, Tom's right. The most of it was just one person uh, either completely writing it, or sort of rewriting it. Um, at the same time, though, we did sort of play off each other. There was a fun element to that. I mean, in a, in a sense, when I'm writing Elohim, he's there to be undermined by Milton. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so there is an interplay, you know, where, where you make him more stuffy and full of himself, and then Milton can poke holes in that, mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time, Elohim can say, yes, but what a cynical shit you are, and back <laughs> and forth, back and forth. And um, but, but yeah, the way that we did it, it was not unlike, um, uh, you know, a sort of dialectical process of uh, talking to each other via these characters. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Um, so let me then ask, and then we will go into the playthrough itself. Um, what were, because obviously you had both, as you said, you had Infinite Ocean, um, and Tom, you had worked on the Swapper, which had a lot of these different philosophical elements also. Um, they told you sort of the general gist of these themes, but do you think that this game for either one of you was sort of a refinement of stuff that you guys started? And I will admit that I have not played, I'm sorry to say, either Swap or Infinite Ocean. Only so many, so much time to play so many games, I'm afraid to say. But um, was this a refinement of themes that either of you had sort of touched on in the past? Was it a development of them? Was it, you know, completely new ground for you guys? I'm, I'm wondering, you know, what's the through line from the stuff that you've done before to this? And I guess, Jonas, we could start with you and then work back to Tom. Um, it's definitely a development of themes that I've worked with before in the Infinite Ocean and other games that I've made, especially in the Infinite Ocean. And to some degree, I was worried because I didn't want to write the same game again. Mm -hmm. That was already a game about artificial intelligence and in some ways quite similar. So it, it was actually extremely important to me from the beginning to pitch it in such a way that it would become, I mean, to fans of the Infinite Ocean, it might be like a companion piece. I'm not saying the whole game is a fucking companion piece to, you know, to this, yes. just that people might interpret it as a sort of uh, a related game rather than where I basically just did the same stuff again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I really don't like repeating myself, and I, I wanted to avoid that. Um, but at the same time, it, it was engaging with the same themes from different angles and develop, developing them differently. That was, that was interesting. Not necessarily further, but just from a different angle. Mm -hmm. And perhaps quite a few years later with more skills and more abilities and a larger budget. Yeah, did you, so, so you didn't want to be known as the AI guy? You, you didn't want to get uh, tagged, as it were? No, I, 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 don't, I don't want to be the anything guy. I mean, I'm best known for this Lands of Dream series that I've been making for many years, but even there, I try to vary it. And I, I need to have a reason to be doing a game, to be do, telling any story. It needs to have a, an identity of its own, a, a unique flavor somehow. I find it extremely horrible when artists just redo the same thing over and yeah. over. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, art largely comes from pushing one's own boundaries and envelopes, as, in, in any case.